Do you remember the movie Inside Out with all the emotions running around inside Riley's brain? Riley grows through this whole ordeal during the movie and is finally back safe with her parents. All the emotions breathe a sigh of relief, like, oh, okay, thank goodness all that's over. Right after that, the installers bring in a new big console with a big button on it that says puberty. And they try to read it, but they don't know what it is, so they pronounce it wrong. They say, what is puberty? <laughs> the movie ends with them saying, Riley's 12 now. Everything's going to stay the same and be normal. What could possibly happen? Little do they know that she's about to enter some of the biggest changes of her life. Hi, my name is Jackie Aguilar. I'm a mom of young teen girls like you and a fertility instructor, someone who teaches other women about their cycle. And it is my privilege to be the one who will be guiding you through this exciting journey to discover how your body works. Today, we'll start talking about the signs and changes that happen to our body as we grow from young ladies into adult women. This time of change is called puberty, right? Not puberty, but puberty. We don't want to be like those characters in Inside Out. We don't want anyone to not know what's going on, to be confused or have any kind of anxiety or fear about the changes that are about to occur in their body. I remember feeling clueless when I was your age because my mom didn't talk to me a lot about puberty. She grew up thinking it was something that was very private and should not be talked about. The way I learned about how we start to change was from overhearing girls talk in the school bathroom about changes they were experiencing, and from seeing my friends' bodies develop and noticing they were starting to wear bras. I thought, whoa, that all looks really weird and uncomfortable. I'm glad that's not happening to me. Because my body hadn't started changing yet. I didn't understand that I too soon would be experiencing all these same changes. Our hope as moms for you is to be educated and informed young ladies who are confident about themselves because you know what to expect and you know what's going to happen and you know why it's happening. We want you to know that it's a beautiful, good, healthy, wonderful, powerful thing that your body is capable of. Sound good? All right, let's get started. First of all, everyone has a different growth pattern. Nobody grows at the exact same rate. Some girls are going to start maturing a little bit faster than others. We can't say at age eight or nine or 10 that that's the moment that you're going to start. That's unique to you because you are completely and totally unique and unrepeatable. But what we can say is from the end of puberty looking back, there are certain signs that can indicate that the next step is coming. So that's what we're going to talk about. The very beginning of this process starts internally without us really being aware of it. Hormones begin to activate change. Hormones, wait, what are hormones? Good question. These hormones are pretty important, so let's stop for a moment and talk about them. Hormones are chemicals produced by our body to send messages to different parts of our body and cause change. For example, we have hormones that help us grow, some that help our body deal with stress, and some that keep our body temperature stable. The key hormone driving all of these changes in your body during puberty is called estrogen. All women have it, and it plays a huge role in our lives. We'll learn lots more about it later. These changes in hormones begin to change your body chemistry on the inside, which then causes many changes that we see on the outside. An early external sign we can observe is breast development. When your breast tissue begins to grow, it is referred to as breast budding. They don't always grow evenly together. Sometimes one side grows first and then the other side catches up. Another change you might notice is the shape of your hips. They'll gradually widen, giving you a more curved shape than you had when you were younger. All this growth is completely normal and good. Next, you might begin to notice the development of hair. You'll start to see additional hair in your armpits and in your pubic area. Another result of the chemical changes in your body is changes in your skin. Your skin may eventually become more oily and you may experience some acne. This is a normal part of puberty of the chemical changes that are happening, so developing a good face washing routine might not be a bad idea at this point. Another change that comes along with your new body chemistry and growth of hair is body odor. 
When you were little and you went outside to play, you came in smelling like the outside, like grass and trees. As you begin to mature, you develop your own body odor. This is something that your parents and you can easily find solutions to. You go to the store, you get some deodorant, make sure you shower regularly, it's great. Changes in the way you experience emotions will also occur. Going back to those very important hormones, they're practicing going up and down and changing constantly, so don't be surprised if your emotions do the same thing. One moment you're excited and happy, and the next moment a wave of sadness or frustration comes out of nowhere. We're going to give you some helpful tools throughout the program that will help you understand how your hormones impact your emotions so you can feel more confident and not lost in all these new emotions. Speaking of emotions, I'm reminded of one of my favorite stories when I was your age. Are any of you familiar with the book Charlotte's Web? At the end of the story, Fern is at the fair with Wilbur. Wilbur's been her best friend since he was born, a little runny pig. All of a sudden, Henry Fussy walks up and invites Fern to go to the Ferris wheel. Fern jumps up right away and takes off with Henry Fussy, leaving poor Wilbur behind. Wilbur's heart is broken. He thinks, Fern doesn't love me anymore. But it's not that at all. Wilbur doesn't realize, you know, he's just a pig, that Fern is going through puberty and her emotions and desires are changing. Her interests are changing. She's no longer interested in the things she was interested in when she was younger. Now she's interested in Henry Fussy and in relationship and maybe the idea of love because she's becoming a woman. It's very sad for Wilbur, but it's a natural part of life. All this time you're continuing to grow and even have really big growth spurts where all of a sudden you need new shoes and you're almost as tall as your mom. All the changes that those ever so important hormones have caused thus far can be a helpful indication for us if we know what we're looking for. A key vital sign that we will begin to see later on in puberty that will help us for the rest of our life is what we call cervical mucus. It comes from an organ inside our body called the cervix, and that's why we call it cervical mucus or cervical fluid. You will notice it either in your underwear or when you go to the restroom. You'll know you're seeing mucus when you see a substance that can be cloudy white or clear in color and it behaves like stretchy egg white. I wasn't ever taught about cervical fluid and wasn't ever aware of it when I was young like you. Maybe it was because I started playing sports a lot in middle school right around the time of puberty. So my underwear and the rest of me got really sweaty every day. So the dampness of mucus I might have felt probably went unnoticed. I remember the first time I really saw it, I was already in college and I didn't know who to ask about it. I wasn't sure if it meant I was sick or something was wrong. I didn't know it was a healthy sign, but now that you know what to look for, you won't mistake cervical mucus for a bunch of perspiration or some kind of infection. You will know that it is a normal sign of health, not anything to worry about. In fact, mucus is a really good sign. Those same hormones that produce cervical mucus also support your brain development during puberty. They are part of what makes sure your heart and immune system are healthy. They help with fortifying your bones so they grow strong. So when you see that cervical mucus, know that it means you are awesome and that you are developing in a really good and healthy way. The final big change occurs six to 12 months after you begin to see the cervical mucus. Once hormones reach a certain level, the process of ovulation and first menstruation will occur. What is ovulation? Ovulation is an amazing process that happens inside your body, and it's so vitally important that we have a whole lesson set aside just to learn about ovulation. The second word I said was first menstruation, which is also called menarche. Your rising hormones have caused the growth of nutrient-rich blood that is meant to someday nurture a new baby. When this blood is not needed, hormones will change and the unused blood then passes out of your body. This is what is known as menstruation or your period. The story of how hormones make this happen is super amazing. This is a process that will repeat itself in a cyclic fashion. It's typically irregular at first, but over time, there will be a consistent amount of days between periods. In the first two years after menarche, 
fewer than 50% of girls have regular cycles, so expect irregularity at first while the hormones are learning to balance out. We're going to learn all about it in another lesson. At first, your period will start very light, just spotting or a few drops of blood. As time goes on, the amount of blood may increase. The bleeding will typically last for three to seven days. You can get your period as early as nine or as late as 15. Statistically, 10% of girls reach their first period by age 10, 53% by 12, 90% by 14, and 100% by 15. Many factors influence when your first period happens, but it's common to get your period around the same time as your birth mother. So asking your mom can be really helpful. When we look back at all these changes, we see that menarche usually happens two to two and a half years after your breasts begin to develop, and cervical mucus begins to appear six to 12 months prior to your first menstrual period. We have so much more to learn and talk about. See you next time.